If your Wi-Fi is really slow, you just came to the right video. In today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to optimize your Wi-Fi. Now we're going to do this in two steps. The first step is just working with what we have and optimizing it. And then we have our second step, which is just throwing money at it in order to get better Wi-Fi performance. So let's start with the tools you'll need for today's video. Basically, you need a smartphone, preferably Android or a jailbroken iPhone. You wanna search for a little app called Wi-Fi Analyzer. And this is an app that will show you what channels your Wi-Fi is working on, something that we'll need to optimize it later. The number one step in optimizing our Wi-Fi, and I know this may not work for everyone, is optimizing the location of your access point. Basically, where you put it is very important. You wanna get it as close to where you're going to use the Wi-Fi most frequently. So if you're always using Wi-Fi in your bedroom, you may want to make sure your access point is actually in the bedroom. However, this is not possible for everyone. Uh, and so you just have to position it somewhere close, where it's close to everything, uh, preferably right in the center of your house, but you also have to keep thick walls in mind, uh, metal walls, very awful for Wi-Fi. Uh, basically, think about it as in how much weight and material is between your device and the Wi-Fi access point. And the less weight in the device there is and the less distance, the faster your Wi-Fi will be. So for this test, I'm just going to put a router in this room next to me. So now that you have positioned your access point in the most optimal location, time to grab your phone, preferably Android. If you have an iOS phone, you can jailbreak it and get an app like this. There's also an app available for both Linux and Windows systems. So turn on your phone. So the app you wanna use is called Wi-Fi Analyzer. So you just open it. And what this app will do is for both the 2.4 gigahertz frequency and the uh, 5 gigahertz frequency, it'll give you graphs. So you can see that we have tailing at home spot on channel one with of course overlap to channel three. And then we can see my network, which is right here. So my network is already fairly well optimized. This is from the neighbors. I can't put it over to the right even more. So you may say, why not put it on channel 10 or 11, but then it would overlap too far to somewhere else. So you wanna make sure that the network you are using is the only network on that band. So as you can see, if we go to five gigahertz, this network here is the only network on five gigahertz on this um, channel 44. So now that we know what channels are already used, our next step is to put our network, our SSID on another channel altogether where it's not interfering with anything else. However, that may not be the, like the case. You may live in a city where there are a bunch of wireless networks all firing at you at the same time. For you guys, there is a little hack, well, hack. It's technically illegal what I'm going to tell you, but whatever, you can actually set your modem's country to another country. So for example, here in Belgium on 2.4 gigahertz, we just use one to 14 and for five gigahertz, we use 36 to 46, I think. I'm not quite sure of that. You can just set your country. If you're in Belgium, you just set it to the US and suddenly you have channels 100 to 116, if I'm not mistaken. You can just change the country your device is in and that will then give you more channels to play where no one will be because technically you're not allowed to in your country. Right, so I know a lot of you may be complete novices to this sort of stuff. So to access your router, you go on your laptop or any wireless device, even wired devices should work in theory. Uh, go to your browser and you want to go, you want to type in 192.168.0.1 or .1.1. It depends on whether or not you have multiple ones of these chained in a row. In my case, you can also just go to routerlogin.net or rather .synology.net. So this is what it looks like on a Netgear router. It's almost identical, no matter what device you're on. It may have a different layout, but the key features are always the same. So you just go to wireless. Most of the time it's right there already. Sometimes it'll be a separate drop-down menu. And right here, it just says channel, and you can just click that channel and change it to a channel which we saw was completely free earlier. And preferably you want a channel with one or two channels free of it on either side. So two down and two up. So right now I am on nine. So you just make sure that seven to 11 is completely unused for optimal performance. You then repeat the step completely for the five gigahertz frequency if you're using that. So basically these two steps are the only thing you can do without adding 
networking infrastructure or without swapping out your access points altogether. So for now, step two, we're just going to add in one of these. So instead of just using range extenders, which I absolutely hate, we're just going to set up this one as an additional access point elsewhere in the house. So right now the Netgear router is running downstairs in the left front corner of the house. And this one is on the second floor on the right rear corner of the house. And hopefully that should give us better coverage. So this next step is fairly simple. The scenario is basically you had one of these or something similar, wasn't good enough. You upgraded to a newer one like this one. You installed it, it works, but it's still not good enough. However, you still have this one laying around. So I'm now going to show you how you set up your old router as a new access point. Now I have already set up the router part, so I'm going to set up this Synology one as an access point. It's actually fairly simple. All you need is an internet connection where you're going to do this. If you don't have an internet connection, you can basically follow the same steps, but you set it up as a range extender, not as an access point. So we'll just plug this one in. There we go. And I'll show you the software side of things. So like everything else in this guide, software really easy to set up. So you just connect your old router just the same way you just set up the new one. Uh, but you just go to your network center or your settings for it and you go to management. Now, my apologies that mine is in Dutch at the moment. I can't easily reset it or it would take like a 10 minute reboot. Uh, basically, it'll be in wireless router mode and all you have to do is just set it to wireless access point. So this step is the easiest when you're still using your old router and you still have the same SSID or Wi-Fi name and the same password and you're on the same channel. That's when this is the easiest. If you're not doing that, you have to go to wireless settings and reset up your name for your SSID name or your wireless name really. And you have to reset up the password too. Basically, if you match the channels and the names and the passwords, you can just switch between the two access points or the two routers that you have set up. Now, I know it's not always this easy, uh, this router is like fully featured, has everything you can possibly want. Some older routers may not have this. So if you're using a D-Link like this one, it won't have it. Basically, it's the exact same story. You set it up as a router, same settings as router number one. And afterwards you go into the software and you disable a little something called DHCP. You then plug in just one cable to one of the four LAN ports instead of the WAN port. So one cable in here, disable DHCP, and one of these will also work as a uh, access point. So guys, this was basically it for my tutorial, my guide on how to make what you have work better. And basically, instead of working better, you're just not making it work against your neighbor's Wi-Fi. That's basically the most important part. Also, we showed you how to just expand what you have already by just reusing your old hardware as something new which i think is pretty cool so if you like videos like this give me a like if you don't just press the dislike button let me know why in the comment area it's all down below uh, if you want to check out my reviews there's just go to the page or i'll put an eye in the top right corner where you can check out my rad reviews for now though guys thank you very much for watching